<coughs> well, welcome to Memphis Monday 255. Uh, today we're going to restore the outside of this uh, camelback uh, trunk. You can see we've already got it uh, finished. Uh, it's a rusty mess when we start. So let's go over there and time travel and see what this thing looked like before we restored it. Let's knock off the chit chat and get exploring. Camelback steamer trunk. I don't know much about it. Except it's real old. Let's look inside. The inside's got this uh, nice old timey lithograph. Unfortunately, the uh, lithograph on the other side is missing a little trap door, a little hat box. The inside's got the inside shelf missing. Uh, the thing is uh, paper lined. And it looks like the original paper is still in there. I don't have a plan yet. Uh, let me, uh, what I'll do is, is I'm going to clean it up a little bit with some uh, mild soap. And so we can get a better look at it. And, and we'll talk about the plan. For cleaning it up. Uh, what I've been using is soap with a, this is Lysol that's been cut with 50-50 uh, water. I've tried uh, some rust remover on the particular rusty areas. I've also tried furniture, uh, some of this uh, form beast furniture refinisher. Mineral spirits, lacquer thinner. And I've also tried some of the stuff I'm about ready to show you, I couldn't get off. I still haven't been able to get it off, but I tried some uh, paint stripper. When I res say restrain, I mean, you know, this thing's 100 years old, and I just don't want to paint it and just hide the whole thing. I want to do as little as possible to, uh, you know, to show its age. Uh, but still be, you know, a clean and uh, personal, personable kind of uh, piece. So what I plan on doing is leaving the galvanized metal bare, maybe just uh, covering it with uh, varnish, painting the trim, and the, the trim here, and the edging trim, painting it black, restoring it back to its original color and staining the trim, the wooden trim. Side, um, here you can see the, you know, I've got the galvanized metal is showing it. it looks like it's in pretty good shape here. I started to sand this uh, trim here. The little decorative corner treatment here. This apparently was some uh, plated with something but that plating is gone now so I'll probably paint it, paint it black. Anything to the front here uh, I wanted to do the back and the, and the sides as much as clean them up first so that I get halfway smart on what to do. Um, here you can see the trim is rusty. 
to get that surface rust off I can use the rust remover um, but for most of it I just use soap and water to clean it and you can see the trim is all black here you can really see the galvanized metal here see that that is just shiny as heck See it over here too. Here's a close-up of some of that corner treatment. This is the actually the, the one that's in the best shape. But in this close-up you can see the, some of the the old color. You know it looks uh, like it was uh, gold or brass plated. I think it would be a mistake to try to restore that color and I'd have to uh, paint over the patina and I think it just looked gaudy. Uh, here you can see kind of a three-way close-up here. This is the trim. This is the corner trim that's painted black. And then here's the galvanized metal over here. So my plan is to, re to restore this wood, paint this black, and then leave this in its natural metal. Now here you can see I've sanded this, this little portion over here to see if it was possible to get this brown off here. Let me give you a close-up of that brown. Here's a close-up of that brown I'm fighting. See, this is a real, I don't even know if my camera's focusing here. But this is, uh, this is that brown problem. I've tried uh, stripper and paint thinner and all kinds of solvents trying to take that off. It kind of looks like rust to me, but a rust remover doesn't take it off. Now this, is, this has been my solution here to get that brown off is to sand it, but that's kind of an extreme measure. But I think it would look better if that brown was off there so I'd have the contrast between the, uh, between the, the uh, bright metal and the natural wood. Over here, this is the contrast between these two. There's the wood, and there's the brown. I think I'll try sanding this and see if we can get through that brown stuff. I sanded down that uh, that brown stain all over the top, except in the dimples, um, and I sanded down the trim a little bit. Let's go to the internet and see if our plan is similar to anybody else's plan. Okay, what we've decided to do is to paint the black corner trim. Um, and this trim here, and then finish this and just clean off the stainless. Here's a picture, picture I got on the internet, similar design. You can see it's got that same right there in the center it's got the stainless 
metal on the corners on the corners it has the painted edging it's got the same trim see it's got the two two trims and then across the top so you got four bands and this one has four bands so this was uh, this on the internet the claim is uh, 1870s and they're wanting five thousand dollars for it and you can notice that it has very minimal restoration uh, that's what we're going to do too very minimal I think I'll do is <clears throat> sand it down this top. What I think I'm, I'm going to do is kind of go over it with some uh, soap and water just to clean it. I may put some dust remover on it, clean rag. See how dirty we can make this rag. Not too bad, really. I'm gonna put a little rust remover on it. Not a whole lot because this stuff is a nightmare to try to get off. I mean, it cuts with water, but I don't want to get any on the wood. And I don't need any on the black trim on the outside. What I'm doing is spread it on with a paintbrush. What you do is you leave this on for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes in it. It kind of foams up a little bit. Probably got a muriatic acid base. Could use muriatic acid for this too, which is hydrochloric acid. That's, that's pretty nasty, pretty nasty stuff. And this is in gel form, which makes it a little, a little bit less nox noxious compared to. Uh, regular muriatic acid. Here you can see it uh, kind of foaming up a little bit. Especially on those hinges. The uh, hinges and clasp appear to be mild steel. Pretty rusty. Now I don't know if a galvanized metal reacts with um, muriatic acid or not, but that was definitely rust on there that I sanded off. Now on here, you got to be kind of careful. Get it, when you get it on. Um, if you let this stuff dry, it turns black. You've probably uh, seen advertisements on television for rust remover that turns into a 
you know, they brag about it and say, well, it turns into a black primer when you're done. Well, here's some I slopped on the bottom, and you can see that after it dried, it turned into this uh, black residue. Down here, I'm okay with it because I'm, I'm going to put a, I'm just going to paint the bottom of this thing to uh, stop any, any further corrosion down here. And what I'm here, what I'm doing here is taking some uh, steel wool, kind of rubbing this thing in, this stuff in. But what you got to remember with this rust remover, particularly if it's, you know, it's acid based, it's going to uh, eat steel wool up. So. Yeah, I'm going to remove this stuff using soap and water. you got to be careful with muriatic acid. You don't want to mix it with chlorine. This might have some chlorine in it. If the smell, if you smell a strong, some strong chlorine smell, it means that the muriatic acid is mixing with the chlorine and releasing pure chlorine gas, which is not good. Well, there's the front. It looks a lot better than it did a few minutes ago. Uh, of course, it's still wet, so once it dries, we'll see what it looks like. Still need to uh, do a little more work on that side. You can see the difference in color between the side on the right and the front on the left. We'll work on that end first. What I'm still doing is uh, wiping it down with some uh, soap and water. I've got to get, the reason that's so important is I've got to get the, um, the rust remover off. And I don't want any haze or anything on it. Of course, I'm not painting this part through here, uh, but I will be painting the ends. So what we have to do next is, I don't know, let's let this dry and then figure out what our next uh, job is. I was checking the video and I said I was going to paint over these. Well, I'm not going to paint over these. I don't know why I said that. I, I think I was thinking that I was only, only going to paint one thing. The, the trim here, and this is on the trim, I, I never intended to paint, paint over these. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to brighten them up by getting all the dirt and crud out of all these little cracks. And I got a small wire brush to do that. I'm getting ready to put that uh, coat of black paint on. Here's a takeaway. Sometimes you get away with this. Instead of taping over these things you don't want paint on, you can rub a little grease on them. And the paint won't stick to it. But you gotta be real careful.
because if you slop any on your painted area, it won't stick there either. Oh, well, there she is, all taped up. I already grabbed hold of the uh, places I had greased. But every place, that's the front. Um, all this will be silver, and then this will be black. The uh, ends are black, and this piece of trim This one piece of trim right here goes all the way around, plus the hinges are also black. I don't think the paint's completely dry, but let's uh, take our tape off. See what this part of it looks like. Well, this is the uh, corner treatment that I taped off. And here's one that I put the grease on. I'm taking the grease off now. I, uh, Keep the paint from sticking, but I don't, I don't, I don't think in this application it's a good idea. Well, here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to add some uh, stain to the wood. Well, that'll do it for Memphis Monday 255, our camelback uh, trunk. We have restored the outside. I was able to save all the bright work. And I found a picture on the internet. We talked about that picture. So I was able to uh, restore it back to the uh, original look. So overall, I'm pretty satisfied. Don't know what uh, what else I do. I uh, I do have some handles here for it. I want to show you. Um, these handles. We'll go in here, and then they attach down here. But I don't want to put them. I don't want to put them on yet until we uh, we work on the inside. So, <coughs> well, that does it for uh, Memphis Monday 255. Uh, today we ran out of time, but. Uh, we still completed this, the restoration, the outside of this. We kind of got lucky. We found a picture of, of this uh, camelback uh, chest, sometimes called a Saratoga chest, sometimes called a steamer chest, sometimes called an American chest, an American dome top chest. But lots of different manufacturers, they uh, copied one another. So you'll see this design just about everywhere. Uh, metal on the outside, wood on the inside. Uh, next week, hopefully, if we get around to it, we're going to uh, restore the inside, which would be interesting. Couldn't do it all in one, uh, one episode, obviously. Um, hope you got some takeaways. And I really went into some detail about some of the chemicals I used. I used a rust remover, lacquer thinner, paint thinner, soap and water, uh, so forth and so on. But I think we uh, had a lot of fun and uh, I think the project turned out okay. So 
like, favorite, share, and all the stuff you do on the internet. But most important, make sure you're back here next week for another important, uh, exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along. <laughs>